Hi, I'm Palab Dev, Managing Director of Application ISV Partnerships at Google Cloud. I'm super excited today to be moderating this session with Mike Relic, co-CEO of lifestyle brand Paxson, with Eddie Capel, the CEO of Manhattan Associates, and Aaron Brown, CEO of Shopify Fulfillment Network, on how each of these three fantastic companies are innovating to deliver more visibility into supply chains and creating the sustainable store of the future. So let's get this going. Sustainability is a broad topic, and I think all of us can relate to it, that it's got multiple imperatives. Obviously, the environmental, but there's also financial and technological imperatives. So we're going to kick this off today with Mike. And so, Mike, thanks for being here today. I'd love to understand from you, Mike, how is Paxson, a lifestyle brand apparel company with 300, 325 stores, I think, across the United States, building sustainable practices into how you run your business on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, thanks, Palab. Basically, our customer, the Gen Z customer at PacSun, basically sustainability is very important to them. So because of this, at PacSun, we look at sustainability holistically. Sustainability starts with the raw materials that are used, the manufacturing process, transporting the goods to the distribution center, getting those goods to the customer, and extending the life of the garment. So because of this, we use organic fabrics, fabrics that minimize the depletion of natural resources. And just to, as a data point, it takes 1,800 gallons to make one pair of jeans. So to mitigate this, we use BCI cotton or Better Cotton Initiative. Basically, this is sustainably farmed cotton that lessens the environmental impact to the soil, uses less water, and it improves the livelihoods of farmers. We also source fabrics with recycled content, and we use sustainable fabrics such as bamboo. Then now let's talk about the manufacturing process. You know, it takes 200 liters basically to dye one kilogram of fabric. So because of this, we look for manufacturing techniques that are low wash to minimize use of water. We also look at alternative technologies such as digital printing and dyeing because it's more environmentally friendly. When it comes to denim, rather than doing extensive washes, we use lasers, which basically do doesn't use water at all. And we also select factories with water recycling capability. So now that brings us to reuse. You know, there's 36 billion clothing items that are thrown away each year in the US. And 95% of those could be reused or recycled. In the US, there's 11.3 million tons of apparel that are thrown into landfills. And you know, that represents 85% of all of textiles that are produced in a year. Now that equates to 81.5 pounds per person per year. So with our collaborative partnership with ThreadUp, you can rewear, recirculate, and repeat PacSun goods. So when you trade in a pair of old PacSun denim, we'll give you a discount on a new pair. But by giving this garment a second life, this is reduces the environmental impact by as much as 82% and returns one item of clothing back into the circular economy and extends its life by about 2.2 years. So this basically helps fight fashion waste and reduces basically the amount of goods that are put into the landfill. Now this, this is the first step in creating a sustainable circular economy in fashion, which involves designing and promoting products that last can be reused, repaired, and remanufactured. Mm -hmm. So now let's talk about logistics. So we try to get our products to our warehouses, stores, or directly to our consumer via green supply chain. We use ocean vessels that minifies the use of air freight, which has a very heavy carbon footprint. We draw on cloud, machine learning, and the latest technologies to create faster, smarter, and more efficient logistics plans therefore reducing the carbon, carbon footprint as much as possible. So now let's talk about flexibility and adaptability and agility. These are key requirements in retail if you wanna be successful. So to do this, we moved to Manhattan's cloud-native microservices-based order management system two weeks before 
the pandemic hit. It enables to move from a DC centric model to a ship from anywhere model that included ship from store, buy online pickup and store, same day delivery, and even ship with Amazon Prime. Now, just to give an example, during COVID, we shipped 40,000 units a day out of our stores, which was, which was amazing. So we turned those 325 stores into fulfillment centers. We leveraged store labor. This enables to handle a huge spike in e-commerce orders while delivering products faster and more efficiently, and therefore reduced not only our transportation costs, but our carbon footprint. And, and it increased basically our margins also. So not only did we meet environmental goals, but it was more profitable. And this is a huge competitive advantage and it bolstered our sustainability and our profit goals. And we also leverage machine learning and analytics to place product in proximity to the customer. So we lower the transportation distance and we minimize split shipments, therefore lowering our expenses and our carbon footprint. So lastly, let me tell you about a project we're working on now. You know, with the Amazon effect, most customers expect to get their goods in one or two days, but typically that's the most carbon unfriendly and most costly. So if you tell customers, look, what is the alternative that's the most carbon neutral? Typically, even if it takes longer, they'll select those. So this is a product we're working on now. And we think, again, this will help our sustainability goals and also help our profitability. So anyway, thank you for letting me tell my story. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you, Michael. That was fantastic. You left me with so much statistics out there, but the one that was most telling was that 36 billion clothing pieces of clothing are thrown away every year. That's just mind boggling. Wow. But then you also made a great reference to how you're moving to cloud native technologies. And here I'd love to bring up Eddie uh, to hear really about, you know, how Manhattan, a leader in cloud native supply chain technology is really helping retailers out there get more efficient in the way they run their operations, but also in a very sustainable manner. Eddie? Yeah, hey, Paula. Um, well, look, in general, we're focused on the end-to-end -end supply chain, okay? We, we help our customers use technology to take miles out of the supply chain, air out of the supply chain, make sure right, the right products are in the right place at the right time, make sure that distribution centers are just as efficient and as effective as they can possibly be. But today, I'd like to talk about how we can help build a, a retail store that is sustainable. Because by definition, retail stores tend to be rather energy inefficient. Buildings in general are energy inefficient. They need to be heated, they need to be cooled, they need to be lighted, um, and, and, and this creates a challenge. You know, as the as the folklore goes, the, the most uh, energy efficient retail store on the planet is a bookstore in Paris. You know, if you buy into the fact that uh, that uh, uh, nuclear energy is green, uh, then generally France is powered by nuclear energy. Uh, uh, books create a very dense skew count in a store, and most people in Paris are going to walk to that store to pick up their pick up their product. So we're focused on how can we begin to try to emulate some of those characteristics? How can we be, bring a bigger skew count to the retail, the physical retail experience than can actually be stocked in the store? So how can we make sure that inventory across the entire network is saleable? We know how we can get it to the consumer when we can get at the consumer in a very efficient way. And we know that retail stores are multifunction facilities today. They've got, to, they've got to provide this beautiful consumer experience as they've always done, but they're also boutiques, they're galleries, they're customer service centers where customers can buy products online, return them at store. As Mike says, they're miniature distribution centers, they're multifunction facilities. We need to introduce technology to the store associates that enable them to be multifunction in a very efficient way. So if it's a buy online pickup in store order, a curbside pickup, a ship from store, a cash and carry order, all of those capabilities can be delivered to that retail store associate in a, in a very efficient and effective way while still being able to deliver a wonderful consumer experience. And maybe that includes multiple checkout options. So we can make 
again, those store associates, even more efficient, some self-checkout, some mobile checkout, along with fixed station. It's an interesting challenge. It's one that we're up for to create this environment where we can build a smaller footprint store, more technologically enabled, uh, more advanced for the associate, a better experience for the consumer, and at the same time, environmentally friendly. Thank you, Eddie. As you were speaking, I was imagining the store of the future. And just, just, it's, it's just amazing hearing you almost paint it for me as regards how that store would look like and how it functioned. Thank you so much for that. And that brings us to you, Aaron. I mean, just think about Shopify Fulfillment Network. You are everything. You're everything from commerce to fulfillment, logistics. So I'm really excited to hear about how do you run this all in a sustainable manner? Thank you very much, Pallav. Um, and it's great hearing the stories from Mike and Eddie. Uh, it's really interesting to see how every stage of the supply chain can fit together to help drive sustainability today. Um, Shopify's mission is to make commerce better for everyone. And our platform works behind the scenes to power the success of millions of merchants around the world. And we do this in two ways. Number one, by creating technology that simplifies life for our merchants. And number two, by aggregating volume that gives merchants capabilities and scale that they could never achieve on their own. But we also recognize that entrepreneurship is a fabric of society that has been around for as long as mankind. And so we want to help humans improve global sustainability it's only impossible. It's only it's impossible to do that with e commerce playing a lead role. Now, Shopify has been taking a zoomed out view of this problem set for a long time, and it's a hard, hard problem. In 2019, we established our sustainability fund, and we've spent over 30 million dollars on carbon removal since then. We currently have over 20 partnerships with innovative companies spanning all kinds of carbon removal verticals, whether it be direct air capture or ocean, forest, soil, transportation, or other areas. But that's Shopify supporting sustainability, not our merchants. And for many merchants, there's a tension between doing what is right for the environment and what is best for their own operational efficiency and profitability. And that tension is hard to balance on the best of days. And it must seem impossible when an entrepreneur is dealing with inflation, rising interest rates, a tough labor market, and other things. And when merchant success and sustainability aren't on the same side of the table, sustainability quickly downgrades from being a priority for today to an idea for tomorrow. And truthfully, that's how we've all gotten to this mess in the first place. Now, although I believe that tension between success and sustainability is visible in most areas of commerce, I think it's by far loudest in logistics. The past decades have seen an unstoppable acceleration of buyer expectations for fast delivery. Uh, when I grew up, there were Sears catalogs and they've been replaced by shopping malls, which have been replaced by smartphones. And trains have been replaced, as Mike said, by air travel with last mile delivery. And most merchants keep their inventory in a single warehouse, which means if a buyer's in LA or New York, uh, most orders travel a really far distance to reach that buyer and leave quite a contrail. But what can a merchant do? They can't decrease buyer expectations. They can't afford multiple warehouses. They can't build electric airplanes. And this is where modern technology comes in. I'm here today representing Shopify Fulfillment Network, and we're building a merchant first fulfillment network that connects a merchant's entire supply chain from port to porch. And hidden in our boring cost accounting, we've discovered an insight that actually we believe can change everything. Our dirty little secret it is it is cheaper to fulfill a one day order than a three day order. Let me say that again. For us, it is cheaper for us to fulfill a one day order than a three day order. How is that possible? Why does it happen? And how can it help with sustainability? The truth is the only way we can possibly fulfill a one day order is if the inventory already happens to be close to the location of the customer before they click buy. And for us, that insight has changed everything. Although it's impossible for one merchant to have the capital to own multiple warehouses, uh, the inventory to spread it across an entire country, the data to predict demand, the scale to build deals with every local ground carrier, when they work together, they can. And so Shopify helps them. We're building a national network. We're using cloud data to predict demand for every merchant and every SKU, and also to predict the location of every order. And we're building a platform that vertically integrates a merchant's entire supply chain with cloud services that dynamically routes 
every merchant's inventory across our entire network in real time. And when we do that well, we actually disrupt that natural tension between faster fulfillment and lower emissions. But Plab, I, I don't think that's enough. Whether a customer's in a physical store or an online store, most have already decided to buy something well before they get to the checkout. And so if we wanna make sure that customers buy the products that best support sustainability, we have to help merchants surface ambitious delivery promises before the customer decides what to buy. And for Shopify merchants, that means placing shop promise on every single place on the internet where a buyer sees a product impression, whether it's a Google search ad or YouTube video or the product page of a merchant's online store. And the funny thing is when we do all of that, it dramatically increases the merchant's cart size and conversion rate and repeat sales of only the products that are most sustainable for the environment. And when you add all that up, we get merchant success, buyer expectations and sustainability all on the same side of the table. Phew, Aaron, that was again fantastic. Each of you bought such amazing nuggets of information here. Predicting demand for every SKU for every merchant, that's a holy grail of a challenge. But I'm, if there's one company that can do it, it's probably y'all. So uh, I think this is a fantastic session. I learned a lot and I'd like to thank each one of you. Mike, Eddie, Aaron, you all three of you have brought amazing insights into our presentation today, into our conversation today. I'm sure our audience who's been with us, I thank you for listening in. And I'm pretty sure you will walk away a lot more enriched from this conversation. There's also some interesting takeaways here in terms of additional material that you can lean on to further your awareness and knowledge of how sustainability is driving the logistics and the retail store of the future. Thank you, everybody.